Um, hi guys, welcome to another episode of Good Ballet Juju and I'm here with my good friend Vito Menezes from the Royal Danish Ballet. Hi Vito. Oh, hello Bean, how are you? Oh, it's so nice to see you again. It's lovely to see you and it's lovely to see Fridman at the back. He's yes. looking fierce. Yes. I brought, brought, brought him out just for you. We are both you know, ah, that I like, you, know you. you know that I like Roberto Bolle a little bit more, but I know we also fans uh, of Friedman. I think it's it's a tough competition. I think that they they both have um, a very good game, a very good game. So I think I I, I I'll, I'll be um, it'll be tough to choose which I one I prefer. But I mean, Friedman looks especially good in this picture. I I, I made sure to pick the good one where you can see the yes. muscles. You know, all the muscles. Oh, you can see that. And the staring at the camera, it's, it's rather powerful too. I mean, he's looking straight, <laughs> straight into your soul right there. It's, I know. It's like, that's like the best way to spend a Thursday morning, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> With me and Friedman, but mostly Friedman. Yes. <laughs> How long have we known each other for? Like, we've known each other. We met each other? Did we, met, did we meet first in Singapore? Yeah, uh, when you guys were doing Corsair. And then um, yes. I was with Jeanette. And, yes. and then we hung out together and then I have no idea what happened after that. And then you came to London as well. You remember we went for dinner? Oh yeah, and that, that's like because you saw I was in London and so I tagged yes. you or something. Or you, I think yes. you DM me or I tagged you or something and then we went out for dinner, I remember. Yeah, and then you came to Copenhagen. So I've just been like stalking so, you basically. So we go, we go way back. I've been stalking you, that's what happened. <laughs> No. <laughs> You're like, no, but that's actually what happened. Like, she came to London, and she came to Copenhagen. No, I mean, you in London, you could have picked anyone else. <laughs> no, I just thought you guys were the coolest. I thought the EMB people were the coolest. Don't tell the Royal Bank. Uh, we, we, we were the coolest. Uh, but I remember, <laughs> what I liked about Copenhagen is you bought me pastry. I remember. I mean, it's, uh, like, it's the best of the best here, actually. It's, um, I, it's, it's, hard, it's very tempting. Um, yeah, you bought me pastry. Especially then... during quarantine times. I feel like I could easily fall into like my daily pastry. Uh, the and then I end up becoming a pastry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll both become cinnamon buns. That's like my yes. favorite thing there. Like, can't can start? They're... How do, do you know how to say it? Caneo, caneo, no? Caneo. Caneo style. It's so good. It's like... Like that, that's why I went to Copenhagen. It wasn't to see you. It was just to eat pastry. Just, yeah. Yeah. And I remember I mean, uh, you, you, um, you were responsible for my first and only fish dive. That's true. By the lake. By the lake. Very, ap- very appropriate background as well. I know. I still have the picture. Now I want every, like, I, that's like the bar now for, friend, for friendship with my male yes. friends. Like, if that fish die, like you um, must fish me up. <laughs> yeah, I think now I should just make that compulsion when I have like guy friends. Like, it's you got yes. you have to give me a fish die. You have to pass the audition. Yeah, pretty much, and it's very it's high like, bar set by Vito. Otherwise, you swipe left right away. Yeah, I'm gonna start making a list of all like uh, my dancer friends now, and like every time I see them, it's like you got a fish die. Dive or not friends anymore. You were you were cancelled. Yeah, cancelled. <laughs> That's how it's going to be. That's me in 2020 now. When I go to travel. Post-corona. <laughs> Post-corona, yeah. Um, but how are you guys doing in Copenhagen? Like, what's the situation there? Um, we are doing, uh, as a country, we are doing very good, actually. I feel like they, they took the right measurements at mm-hmm. the right time. So mm-hmm. we started our uh, quarantine quite earlier on. Right. Um, so by now... Um, Restaurants are back, on, like back open. Uh, mm. Bars are back open. Hairdressers, schools. Uh, I feel like everything is sort of back to normal as we get. But we, as a company, we are still not working. Right. Um, I think it's just because, as a dancer, it's almost hard to not have human contact. Especially when you're you're rehearsing and all, so they're they're trying to avoid some of that. But we also uh, the company is about to go on our summer break. Yeah. That got shifted. So once we come back in August, we have more time to rehearse for the production, and because I think they are, they're also adding more shows um, to like compensate the the loss, the 
happened during this weird time. And you were saying that, like, you know, we were talking before this, and you were saying that people are really excited to get back into the ballet, right? And you said the ticket sales. Yeah. Are- yeah, so uh, the theater opened their ticket sales a um, couple of weeks ago, and they had, uh, like, a record on the, the history of the theater. Even, like, the website crashed because people are really, they really want to go back to their their normal life and be social. And one thing um, I really appreciate about Denmark is because uh, people really enjoy going to the theater. They, for them, like they, they make it into an experience and you can see that it's, uh, it's the way that they are brought up. I think it's, a, it's, it's very nice, especially coming from, from Brazil, which ballet is not necessarily part of their culture. It's, yeah. it's very interesting to uh, be in a country where people are raised into it uh, mm-hmm. and they have like, uh, an appreciation for the dark form. Um, I just wanna, so like for you then, how has it been? Um, because Denmark was on some some kind of lockdown ish situation, yes. wasn't it, for a while? Well, yeah. So it's been ups and downs. I have to say, I think for for everybody, it's a bit like that. I feel like um, I like to uh, say that I go through phases. I went through this like paranoia phase right in the beginning. Because I remember um, when when it happened, we had um, an, uh, an announcement of the prime minister on TV, and like she said, she, like saying that she was like shutting down stuff, mm. and at home we sort of panicked and we went to the supermarket and it was like oh, no. one of those like up, like The Walking Dead or something like like people were like going crazy or like when yeah, you watch yeah. uh, Black Friday in the US yeah, yeah, yeah. and people were like fighting over a pasta. <laughs> uh, so I feel like the, the whole begin the beginning was very weird, especially because we we were about to open a show on Saturday, yeah, and we we closed down on uh, I think it was a Wednesday night. Mm. So we were like we had like Johnny Meyer was here, and we were like on the final stages of putting this ballet that took so long together, uh, and then suddenly oh, man, everything just went one. through the window. Um, so that was the frustrating part. Um, Which ballet was so it? Then it was uh, Mahler's Third. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. It's uh, I guess it's like it, it's a bit of it's quite a lot older, but it, it, it's fabulous. It's like it's a lot of men in tights, and like we have like human pyramids. It's like it's it's quite oh, epic. I'm gonna YouTube that one. <laughs> I heard I heard Mahler. Yes. I'm like oh, that sounds interesting. Yes, the, the, there I think there's a video of Paris Opera doing it. Um, mm. But it was a shame because we had been working quite very hard yeah. for for that. And then what came next? And then it came next the paranoia that I, I thought I had coronavirus that I didn't, but it was just my brain acting. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm so I, I mean, sorry. I wasn't, <laughs> no, it was just like I got like a, a like a scratchy throw and then you go on the internet and like <laughs> anything can be a symptom. No, and and it's just like <laughs> yeah. I absolutely uh, like I think I watched a lot of Grey's Anatomy growing up, and I like, <laughs> and I, I I have a tendency to like go online and check, and it's something that I don't recommend because it's it's a very slippery slope, and when yeah, you realize sure. you like you are diving in and you think you're gonna die, uh, and I feel like you should never do that. Um, so I I thought I had no, I mean, for like minutes, uh, and then I was like everything I was like trying to like take my vitamins and take extra vitamins. I started a two liters of water challenge a day. Um, you did everything. So I've been trying to stay as healthy as I can. <laughs> but, but, now, <laughs> but now I'm back to normal. Um, and, uh, but I've been, uh, and, and then I, like, I started the online classes and all of that. I took up knitting. Nice. Oh, we should we knit. I should. I used to knit too. Maybe we should like do a Zoom oh, really? session where we just knit. I used to when I was oh, in university. Like it was. It, 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 it's very. It's very um, therapeutic, especially consider that uh, I can be quite anxious at times, and yeah. like being at home is not uh, the best thing. Um, and I so feel like what what gives you anxiety? Because you always seem like a very when when I mean I mean you know we've had like introspective conversations yes. before like. Yeah. What the two times like, we hung out, but generally you seem like a really yeah. positive kind of, you know. No, I think I, I I consider myself a positive person, but I feel like uh, I take that from the people around me. I feel like uh, 
being surrounded by people and having stuff to do keeps me sane. Mm -mm. And when I when I don't have stuff to do, I get very restless. Uh, like when like was when like the, the first few weeks, I got myself just like walking around the house, not necessarily having anything to do. Mm. And I was just like sort of like walking and doing the dishes. And I was just like, I had to like force myself to just like, now you sit down and you breathe because right. it's just like, um, so I, when I feel powerless, I get very restless. Yeah, um, feel, you feel like out of control, right? Yeah, and I feel like, and then it's when your mind goes into yeah. like weird places. Um, so I've been meditating. Something, two things I've learned, uh, three things I've learned with Corona has been uh, yes, knitting. lockdown tips. Knitting, uh, it, it was good, especially because I saw there was like, it's a quick progress. So you mm. see it happening right in front of you. So like the amount of work that you yeah. put on, you see it right there. That was very good. And then I started meditating, which is, um, it's very calming. Yeah. And then I started yoga as well, which I, I guess I had done some when I, uh, a few years ago, but I was always so busy. Yeah. And I never really had the time. So um, I, I started doing my daily yoga, which has been mm. nice. Yeah, I mean, that's quite different from ballet in a sense. Like I almost don't enjoy doing yeah. yoga. Like really, I do it when when like there's no ballet class. I do yoga, and I also enjoy because it it's so much slower than yeah. ballet or gymnastics. But then I and feel it like takes time to get used to that. Yeah, but what I try, I try to approach with a different uh, view because I feel like in the beginning I took it as a physical exercise, mm -hmm. and I was just like, oh, I need to stay, and I and I wasn't breathing proper properly, and and now I take more of a like a, a it's like. It's more for my mind. Right. It's like a like calming. Like it's just kind like of sort thing. of like yeah, it's a very calming and it sort of like puts my my body back where it should be. Um, so I I feel like I I need to just like take it easy and almost like you can't force too much. Otherwise, so you, I, otherwise you can balance as well. <laughs> I don't know. I don't find anything calming about chair pose. I mean, like you know when you have to. Like, oh, I don't know how you do it. You're just like holding that position. And you're like, when is it over? It's like a I mean, it's not, a, it's not a pretty thing. It's not like I'm good. I, I don't see myself recording um, a yoga class anytime soon. Like I, <laughs> I, 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 I do it for myself now. And I so think, you're doing uh, like the, the calming kind of yoga, not like the power yeah. kind, right? Yeah. It's, I mean, I guess I follow um, Yoga with Team on YouTube. Oh, uh, okay. Team, team is a sweetheart. Okay, he I'm makes me blush sometimes. Uh, but oh, he, you he's very good. He has a very... Uh, yes, yeah. and he has a very cute dog. Oh, that's what I, that's even better. You have cute team and dog and like, it, it, but he, he's very good. He has a very calming voice and he has a good way of explaining as well because I guess my my knowledge of yoga is quite limited. Uh, I guess yeah, I, 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 it's like a, a YouTube version of yoga in a way. It's the same, I guess. YouTube is a great tool though because I learned how to knit on YouTube too. Oh, really? So, yeah, uh, and I've also I'm learning how to juggle. <laughs> Just because I thought it would That's be a good, cool. a good party trick, it, it would be a good party trick. It's harder than it looks, though, or maybe I I'm bet, just more I'm sure. uncoordinated than I thought. You're you're a ballet dancer. There's nothing uncoordinated about you. Come on. I, yeah, but I feel like since such a young age, we're like drilled into a certain mm. type of um, mm. coordination that I feel like. But it, it, even with yoga, I assumed I would be good at it just because I guess I'm more flexible than an average person. Right. But then you, once you do it, you're like, mm. <laughs> but even with knitting, I, it took me like, I, I, I spent a whole day practicing my, like, because I could not get it at first. Um, and I think if it was like a real person teaching me, I would even be a little bit embarrassed how slow I was. Oh, don't but worry. I, guess, yeah. I took a long time. Now to I have myself. the time. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like in terms of say, like ballet stuff, did that any of that? Did you sort of settle into a routine with that pretty quickly in quarantine, yeah. or were you trying to like? No, yeah, definitely because I feel like uh, dancing helped me to stay sane mm. uh, as well as staying fit. Um, I feel like. I went through the like the phase that I was trying to stay in my my best shape. As yeah. if, like because even the theater, they were like, 
okay, mm-hmm. we might go back in two weeks and then we have one week of rehearsals and we are performing. Yeah. So then I was uh, really trying to like uh, stay in shape. Like the theater here, they, they offer like ballet class every morning and they yeah. have like a, a fitness class with the physio. They yeah. offer also yoga class. Uh, so I tried, I, I was trying to stay in a, in a very good shape, but now that I'm sort of going on to the holiday direction mm. of my Corona time, I I still do class every day, but it's mainly with the purpose of dancing. I think I, I in a way, it's been very good, like reconnecting with what I like so much about ballet, that it's like the moving part of it, that it's not, and it's not like having the, the pressure of being judged because I mean, nobody's watching me in my living room. Maybe my neighbor downstairs can hear how much weight I put on. But uh, nonsense! But you look it's, been, it's been very good to like um, really discover myself again as a dancer and like have time to like tune in within me and, uh, and ha- yeah, like just like enjoy dancing without having the pressure of so that no, but you, I have to be on my leg. How do you enjoy bar? That's the question because. Sometimes, like, bar is not always the most fun thing for me. And, like, yeah. mostly I'm just doing bar now because, you know, I can't do center and quarantine. I, the thing is, like, I, maybe I'm going to sound like a, a bun head, which I guess I'm a bit of a bun head anyway. But, but I do. Yeah. But I do enjoy bar. I mean, I guess I, I enjoy, um, for example, when I have bad days, mm-hmm. I have, I, I try to concentrate from the beginning to the end just in my arm. Right. So then, I, like, I have like, I have like a ported bra day. I mean, I guess I still move my legs, but I focus just on moving my arms and like really dancing. Uh, so that's how, when I enjoy bar. <laughs> but the, the, depending on the the bar, I also enjoy the the physicality of it. I think mm. that if I'm having a good day and if if you like, you just wanna push and you wanna do everything on relevant day and you wanna sweat. Um, I don't have that day. <laughs> I don't, don't have, have that. <laughs> 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 you will come. I mean, I, I guess it's it's harder. I don't feel so much like that when I'm holding on to a chair. Um, but um, but I, I enjoy and I, I mean I I would choose center over bar actually. Mm. But it's just because I like I, I much prefer moving and yeah. I think it's just like the, in- I think it's the movement part of like bar. I think what I find it tricky is that say when my muscles are not warm, that's when I find bar really mm. hard because it feels uncomfortable. Like and then by the time we yeah. get to center, you know, there's, say if I'm in a normal class, there's some amount of movement. So then it's, it's okay because, you know, I'm yeah. not, I'm not and it's so a lot more focused fun. on those things. I'm just thinking about combinations yeah. and moving and stuff. So I was like, I was quite interested to know because when I'm warm and I can feel like everything's yeah. happening, I'm like, yeah, fast, great. But when I'm like, it's like when I my body's so not feeling it that like, day, it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I guess it's, it's hard. But I mean, it, it also it depends on the day as well. I feel like, uh, it's something that it, it changes so much mm. from day to day you know yeah. it's like there are days you wake up and you feel so inspired and and I feel like it's what it's been very challenging during this corona time is because at work uh, I, I'm sort of I have to you know like I have to go to the hair yeah. and I have to be active mm. and once you don't have that pressure it's, um, there are times that it becomes very hard to motivate myself yeah. um, but then I try to like find my inner child and like why did I start dancing in the first place no I mean it's like I guess we we all do what we do because we we like it it's like if you really wanted money I would be Alicia Florrick yeah our favorite lawyer (laughs) our favorite lawyer ever if you wanted money I'd be asking, say, like, oh. I've had so many conversations with like b- dancer friends about this. Like, if we wanted money, we wouldn't be in this industry, you know. So I think I, I we do right. what we do because we find joy, and I think it's something that I I try to be very positive about mm. and like focus my career on. Like, I mean, obviously uh, my achievement and all of that, but I think it's mostly in like how much joy I have. Uh, and because I feel like it's such a it's such a short career anyway. Yeah. So I feel like um, I want to like once I I reach the finish line. Yeah. To look back and like remember how how joyful it was and mm. like like the most amazing like memories I shared with my friends and all of that. So I think that's 
that's important. And I feel like it's just like, even when you're performing, if you're really enjoying it, it really comes across as well. I feel like you can, you can really see people's personalities on stage. And I think that's, that's nice. Like, I think that's like the really special thing about ballet as well. It's a lot to do with like the community, like the ballet community that, you know, yeah. we have. Um, I think, I think you agree with me. Like we've met so many, uh, made, I'm sure you've made so many good friends from like the ballet world, yes. including me. Definitely. Course. Yeah. <laughs> and the same yes. thing, like, you know, we've got like our mutual, mutual friends, you know, Jeanette and yeah. Jim, Precious. And of course your brother. You know, yeah. So, like, do I like my brother? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if you do. Like, do 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 we like him? Do we like him now? Are we talking to him again? I'm not sure. Uh, no, we talk to him every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, we we are a team. Um, well, you tell me when we're not talking to him again, and then I, I, I'll stop talking to him. Okay. Yeah, I will. I will send you a a WhatsApp message. Yeah. When oh, so when we things... swipe him left. Yeah. Oh, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. So many questions I want to ask you. But the first one I wanted to ask you, and I think that's um, the incredible thing I saw you doing, is that you arranged for uh, a concert outside in your like condominium's common common area for your neighbors, yes. like a ballet concert. And I thought that was so incredible. Can yeah, you like tell was... me a bit about that? Like, what did you yes. do, and how did it happen? So um, it was it was an awesome experience. Actually, it was uh, it was definitely I think something positive I would take out of this whole weird time that we are going through. Uh, but it was so the theater were like in a way so like the Royal Theater um, it's owned by the government of yeah. the, the state of Denmark, and uh, they were looking into giving back to the community because in a way we get paid with. Uh, people's taxes yeah um and so we were having we have like meetings every monday with our director and on that day me and my flatmate we were because it was very sunny and we were sitting in the balcony yeah and he was like talking about like people coming up with ideas and all of that and so they, when the meeting finished i sort of I, I looked down and i said to her like i mean maybe we should plan like i mean we have the space and I'm sure um, people would really appreciate something different. So maybe we should plan just like a performance. Um, and she, she totally agreed. And like, we thought it was going to be something smaller. Uh, that mm. would be just like us performing. And then we contacted the theater and they got very excited about, and then suddenly it became a whole variety show. Like we had, so we, we danced Don Q and we had, with live music actually, they brought a pianist. Oh, I saw, and, and then, then they speakers. was that like a yes. violinist or something as well? No, it was just a pianist. So they had two pianists. They had because they also had um, an opera singer. Right, that yeah. came. They had an opera singer and they had some actors as well. So, and I mean, my neighbors had the time of their life. So I think it's something that the theater is going to try to to carry on. We did in two locations. And I think they had, after that, they had two more locations with other dancers because I guess they sort of want to give everybody the, the, so the like, chance to, to perform as well. Uh, and they're looking into carrying that on throughout the whole summer, which I hope it works. That sounds I, really cool. Because I feel like um, even if having like that little padded that to work on, it was something that it, it really helped me get through my my days I think like it was like it was a goal that um and having a goal is all we need right now no mm. it's like finding a purpose um so you did the Don Q Pas de Deux from act two three act three three yes okay. and like how did you manage to rehearse that like in I mean in the, did you manage to get the <laughs> no, studio really. or did you have to do it in your living room uh, or? I, I I wish I had a studio no but did in our living room I, like luckily the the theater gave us the the lino so we put the line we i mean we did it all here it was very um compact space uh mm. and whenever we were down there and the theater actually put the lino down i felt like it was performing at paris opera almost <laughs> because suddenly we had a lot of space but we got i mean it's, it's impressive how much you can do in such a limited space you know it's like um but we, we, yeah, we just rehearsed here. We had some rehearsals with the pianist. She, she called us on, on Facebook and we had like live music for the rehearsals as well. Wow. But like you so put it, it, was, it was with very the ceiling, how did you manage to lift? Yeah. Well, we have, 
we have a ceiling that like because we live on the top floor right so we have we have a like i'm not sure if you can see but we have a very high ceiling. oh okay yeah yeah so it was just enough to i mean uh, we had to like change things around especially where the sofa is yeah. like when i was like doing a promenade and all of that so we had to like re choreograph for the living room and then we had a little like dress rehearsal before we did uh like did you go downstairs down to and the... then we rearranged oh, okay everything but it, it was lovely it's just like uh, what i loved it was just like seeing because they have a lot of kids that live here yeah and like seeing the kids reactions were mm. the best like when um uh, my flatmate came out and her tutu like the kids were blown away like i like seeing her on point and like seeing her turn or just like me lifting her um it was it was very interesting so in a way it was it was very good to like try to reach uh, a different type of your audience because I feel like, I mean, I would doubt that any of them has ever been to the, the Royal Theatre. So hopefully, See, that's once where you go back the, to normal life, that's they're going to go back. And hopefully, some from. of those kids are going to like start ballet as well because I feel like, I mean, we can never have too many ballet dancers. No, no. Like, we can never have too many. You're inspiring the next generation. I mean, you know, but I, that's, I tried that's to. Where, but that, that's where the increased ticket sales came from. It was from your performance. That's I, what I, it is. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I doubt. But I mean, I, I was very happy. I managed a little bit. To, so did to you, back. were you in charge of coordinating everything or was it the theater hand do it? Because like, you know, uh, um, for it like was those a bit of both. Yeah, because the theater had to, you know, ship you the little name to your room. And then after yeah. the performance, you had to like set up and the common yeah. era, right? The linonium and the speakers and get the yeah. singers and the actors and everything. Like how much of that sort of the idea was yours and how much input did you have in that? Or was it most of I mean, their side? I the technical, I, I had nothing to do with the technical stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. So they had, they, so like cause in, here in Denmark, they can have at least 10 people in the same room. Yeah. Um, so they managed to like get a team with like technicians and, and like within the artists and technicians and the the musicians, they managed to gather a team of ten people that were allowed to like sort of set everything up. Um, so in a way, the theater has been really really great at like organizing and um, making sure that that came true. And yeah, so it's, but I I really enjoyed. I feel like uh, I for like. Once during Corona, I actually felt like I was like back on stage and alive and dancing, and and it made me realize why I love what I do so much. I and it's like, it's so meaningful because you know I think people need it, need you know more than ever some amount of people. I think it's very easy to forget about the value that the things like art and entertainment and culture yeah. and what they can do for you. You know, in this time when everybody's so worried, and I think you managed to bring some amount of like joy and. And beauty to people yeah. and hope in a way to like them and to your you know yeah and I guess you know and in a way it was good for them to um, understand what we do a little bit as yes. well I feel like um, I guess if you if you're not into ballet it's something that it, it can be not hard to understand but it just it's, it does it sounds quite shallow you no know? it sounds it's and, intimidating uh, to people also i think yeah and i think yeah i think they also think it's a, like a high class thing. yeah it's just like uh and in a way it, it, it's really not i feel like i know we're not high class ballet, so. ballet yeah no <laughs> no but i think ballet, no, i mean definitely not high class but i but i feel like ballet should be accessible for everybody because i think uh there is nothing better than um, going to the theater and like feel moved by a performance. Yeah. So, and I, I think, and and knowing that how you felt that day, even if you go the next day, will be a different feeling because it's live theater, so it, mm. it changes every time. No. Um, so I hopefully people are gonna see that it's ballet is a bit more than just. I mean, if like, it was me and I never me. watched a ballet performance before, I just think that's the coolest thing because it's like an intimacy that you don't, you wouldn't get if you were watching it like uh, in, in an audience in a big theater, you know, where you're seeing it yes. up close, you know, I mean, even from your balcony or whatever, you know, yeah. like the, the, without the lights and everything, you're getting to see everything close up and you get to see yeah, it. Get, like you see the raw product in a way. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I mean, it's still really cool. Which again is the most, dancer, the most exciting. But, yeah. <laughs> but it's like different. The most exciting part. Yeah, I guess it's like a, it's a less glamorous take on a big ballet. No, it's like... Um, oh, it's still glamorous. It's still glamorous. It's still beautiful. <laughs> you know? But it's just, you know, there's something where you can see like the effort and you can see it up close and it makes it more human in a sense. And I think yeah. there's something and beautiful you, about it, that. And in a way, it was very good for me to do something that it wasn't about me. It wasn't yeah. about just like me showing up, like mm. showing off or anything mm. like that. It was more about uh, me sharing what I do. Mm. Uh, and I feel like getting a, a, a positive response, it was, it was very, very meaningful. Um, like I, I even, because I posted on my, my Facebook and like so many people wrote to me. And, and I mean, I'm not a popular person whatsoever, but... Uh, like I even got like messages from people from Australia saying how like wow. touched they were, so it, it it really it really meant a lot, um, and I I really hope I can um, do more of that. I think. Yeah, and in a way, it sort of it planted the seed in my brain that maybe that's what I like, and the bigger picture of my life, maybe that's what I I, I want to do more often, like especially like for example coming from from Brazil where ballet is not necessarily part of their culture mm. that I think maybe in the future that would be something that um, would be very fulfilling if I managed to to do over there as well like to like try to introduce a bit of ballet to people that they wouldn't necessarily not like have seen it before so I think would I mean we see <laughs> I mean you know I'm always going to be there supporting you <laughs> But, um, you know, you say you're not a popular person, but let's, like, you are, you and um, Guilherme are actually, like, Brazil famous, aren't you? Because there's just not that many ballet dancers from Brazil. Uh, so, you guys no. are pretty well known oh. in Brazil, right? Like, among the... I mean, no. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's a very small circle of dancers there. Um, so, but we are also from, like, now we are, like, in the older generation. Like, I guess, like, the people there still in Brazil, they're quite a lot younger than me mm -hmm. uh, but I mean you guys are like paving uh, were the first almost like the first ones kind of to like pave the way and to show people what was yeah. possible yeah I guess whenever we we yeah I guess when whenever we left Brazil uh not that many I mean I guess obviously th there were dancers mm -hmm. outside especially because I guess Brazilian people are very talented um yeah. so like right now like there's a lot of like amazing talent out there which is very inspiring um but i guess we were like whenever we left it wasn't like a very normal thing to do yeah um and um but, yeah, and I, yeah. I, I think i want to talk to you a little bit about that because um you know um you guys you know you and your twin brother guillermo you guys were like the first few one of the first few brazilian ballet dancers and it was like both of you who succeeded um, you know, yeah. you went. You guys went to pre, and then you went to like the English National Ballet School. Um, yeah. What was that like? You know, dancing. It's kind of an interesting situation because you're you're sort of dancing with your brother, and both of you guys have like yeah. your careers have been sort of very close together. It's it's quite yeah. rare. So I mean, what is what is like the good? And I'm sure there's lots of good in there. What's like the good and the bad? Because um, like on one I mean, hand, it's, uh, it's nice to have some be supportive. I'm, in a way, I mean, it's the best. Uh, present I could ask for I feel like we are we 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 are a team and I feel like I I I root for him and he he roots for me and I think having someone so close to you it's it's very very important I think especially um, at times ballet can be quite competitive or it yeah. can uh, so I feel like having someone you really trust next to you it's it's very priceless. Um, and um and i feel like it just it made the whole um i guess like we we moved away from brazil when we were 16 so we moved to london when we were 16 and like we didn't speak any english so right. i feel like everything that was the, like the recipe for a disaster uh, went really well because we were united and right. like we had each other's back and we like if one was feeling homesick the other one was there for the like to help and so I think it's we we are we are a very good package in a way um, and then the bad thing 
I guess it's just like being compared all the time. I guess it's not the easiest thing um, because I guess we do look so similar and like even now, like our director, for instance, still struggles to know which one is which. Um, no. So it's it's hard to be compared, especially because of, like I, I see myself as being very different mm. from from him. That's I mean, you know sense. us, and you know, like even like the dancing is. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say maybe not very different, but there's definitely like we have different qualities. Yeah. Um, and like, I mean, our personality Your is very different. different. So like, yeah. Yeah. So what I what I don't like so much is when people treat us like we are the same mm -hmm. because I think. I mean, we are very similar, um, and we are we are a team and all of that, but we are still two different human beings. Mm. Um, but then, in a way, it was good. Like we had we had a year apart yeah. when because um, I moved. To, uh, so uh, I moved here first, and then Guilherme came. I guess it was a complicated story because he he came here on an exchange yeah. uh, program, and then after he went back to London and then I moved here for a yes. season and then he moved here. Yeah. So in a way it was it was good to have a year apart as well to like really discover who we are as a as an individual because mm -hmm. it's um, we spend so much time together anyway. So it's, mm -hmm. it was it was nice to have a was it difficult uh, a to not have to not have, you know, the person who's been uh, supporting you all the time, you know, be there for you. Yeah. Or was I it like he brought us, okay? it, I, th I think he brought us closer. Uh, I think it definitely brought us closer. I mean, we, we used to call each other every day, actually. Yeah. Like, it was like, whenever I was warming up here for class, he was on his way to work in London. Right. And it was like, we used to just, like, call each other. Um, so I feel like, in a way, it brought it brought us closer. Because mm. a bit of distance is always good. No, I think it's in, in, every, in every relationship. It just, like, if you, if you take a step back, it makes yeah. you appreciate more. And then, like, how do you, so why did you decide to, in the end, come to Copenhagen with him? Because, like you're saying, you know, sometimes, maybe as an artist, like, it can be frustrating if people, you know, tend to put you guys in the same, assume you guys are the same yeah. person when you are not. And, you know, sometimes career-wise, some artists might be like, I want to be my own person. So for you, um, why did you decide to, like, come over and join him and Roy Danish? Uh, I think, I think it's mainly because we work really well as a team. I think, yeah. Um, like I, I feel like he is probably the biggest inspiration I can ask for. Like I feel like, um, like I feel like he, like our personalities are very different, and he he's a very hard worker, and I feel like he really uh, <laughs> he forces me to work harder because. <laughs> of, uh, <laughs> because I, I otherwise I tend to just drift away a little bit. Not drift away, but like uh, no, he definitely he's. I don't believe that. And I, you won and enough I competition feel... to, like for me <laughs> yeah. to know that you've got a good work ethic. No, no, I mean I, I I'm I'm a hard I'm, I'm a hard worker, but he's hard. Like he works harder than I do sometimes. Uh, but yeah, I think we just like we work very well with the team, and I feel like we we got our time apart, and maybe in a couple of years we might take some time apart again I don't know um, but right now we, we are I think we're good we're it's like a, it's like a, it's like a the maybe like the mental support sort of outweighs any of the uh, the cons yeah. that might come through. and it's just like it's, it's having someone that I can share my frustrations yeah and I know you understand yeah um so it's, it's it's I think it's it's important to have someone that you can share stuff with well, I mean, because I, I mean, a, a career a career can be very frustrating. Yeah, uh, it's not easy. But I feel like right? having someone that you can be so open about it, it's it, it's important. Well, I mean, from my personal standpoint, even though I'm all the way in Singapore, I was very happy when the dream team was reunited. I know. Yeah, it, it was a very same. it was a very happy day. It's not the same. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was very happy, but it was also very interesting because, for example, we in London we worked we were together the whole time right so i guess like people they, they knew us as a set of twins and in copenhagen because it was like a different order it was very interesting to see what people saw about us as an individual because i guess they got to know one really well and then yeah. the other one um so i feel like now we have like finally established who are 
who we are as an individual and like as a grown up and <laughs> and all of that. But do I, do I still need to get you guys C and VTs that one says G and one says V so that people can tell you guys apart? I think or? that that's always helpful. <laughs> <laughs> That's always helpful. That'll be your Christmas uh, present next time. My name is Vito. But I mean, I, I have no, I have no shame on just like telling someone like, oh, actually, I'm not Guilherme, I'm Vito. Even though, I, even though we went through, like, I've been through a lot of situations that if it's someone that I don't know really well and it's like the convert, like you were like sort of far in the conversation, I. I sometimes I just go with the flow. Like it happened so many times. I remember the the first year Guilherme did the the emerging dancer back A and B. Yeah. Um, obviously I was in the audience. Um, and after the show, like a, a guy stopped me and <laughs> he was just like, "Oh, how are you? It's so good to see you. Oh my God, you did so good tonight." <laughs> and and, I, and I, I I just the conversation had gone so far in that I, I couldn't just say like actually it was not me oh, so I no. just went along I was like I really enjoyed the experience it was really really good and then I passed it I, I forwarded the message to Claire straight after I was like by the way I spoke on your behalf <laughs> and I and I told that person that I I, re, I was really proud of myself <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant <laughs> But do you, but I mean, does it, 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 I mean, like, just as a small, like, an everyday thing, does it get, like, get a bit frustrating to have to keep correcting people, like, no, I'm Vito, because, like... No, but the thing is, like, we are so used to that sometimes when people call his name, I look just because it might be me, anyways, like, they might be, like, <laughs> like, telling, trying to tell me something, uh, so it's... I mean, I'm I'm used to. <laughs> I I would get anxious because like I haven't like met you guys so many times, so I would like get anxious around you guys because I would be like, I hope I'm I'm getting the names right. I, you know, like, I mean, we see from our I, family, people yeah. still get confused. Like, like we I have, think after uh, like, like guess, you, yeah, no, I was just saying after like you hang around with, you guys for like an hour or so, you can kind of tell who's who. But like yeah. in the beginning, you know, you get like completely thrown. It's, it's a bit tricky. But I mean, we, we like so in our family because we don't we don't see. I mean, not my parents, but like the rest of the family because we don't see them so often. Some of them they get confused. Okay, so like so. every time we go back on holidays, they sort of try to memorize the haircuts or something that's like very obvious that is like the, the, a difference that is very obvious, and then they try to stick with it for the whole holidays um, because like. <laughs> It can't, it can't, I, I, like, I understand that it's, it's, it's tricky. You're very patient. <laughs> but yeah, I think we got, we got to get those, those proud of victory teas for you for Christmas. That will be my Christmas present to you guys. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we should. <laughs> um, and then the other thing I want to talk to you about is that Royal Danish Ballet Spa. That sauna, the sauna. I heard there's yeah. a sauna at Royal Danish Ballet. What is the situation there? We have. We have, well, right now we can't use the sauna, but <laughs> but we do. We have a big sauna in the theater. Yes, this, this, uh, the studios are beautiful and the facilities. Yeah, we. Amazing. I mean, we are very fortunate that we actually have three different theaters. Right. So we have. Uh, we are based in the old stage, which is in the center of the city, and then they have the playhouse that is by the water, and then they have the opera mm. that is also by the water on the other side. Right. Um, and they're they're three incredible buildings. I guess they're all very different from each other. Like the the theater that we are based in is um, is the oldest one, and it's it's full of history, uh, and it's it's really really nice. Like the dressing rooms, we are like we are super spoiled in a way because we we are two by two in yeah. the dressing room. So like coming from a company that we were all the core boys in the same locker room yeah it yeah. feels uh, it feels very different and we have a song i'm so jealous i'm so jealous that like is it a big sauna it's uh, well it's fairly big i would say uh, like considering the the amount of dancers that we have i, I think it's a pretty big sauna I just need to like when 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 I get to visit you again, you gotta sneak me into that sauna. I oh yeah, I mean, come over. We can have a sauna party. Yeah, we'll get like you and your brother and like all our friends, and we'll just have <laughs> we a can sauna pop party. some champagne. <laughs> yeah, very 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 professional. The theater would have no problem with that at all. No, I'm sure they would be absolutely fine. Because I would be like the best sauna. 
<laughs> but yeah, even the dressing rooms are beautiful. Like I yeah. remember I visited um with our yeah, um Frank Carling who's also dancing at Rory Danish and I went to a yeah. dressing room and I was like, You guys could like Airbnb this place and you're not using it. I it's know. Amazing. I know. The thing's like uh, because when I moved here, like finding an apartment here in Copenhagen is not the easiest thing. And I did consider just moving to my dressing room for a couple of days because there's so much space anyways uh, that, I mean, I could use, there's a washing machine as well. There's like, every, there's a fridge. So there's it's everything you need really. You get the, <laughs> it's yours, but not the ones that's facing, with the window that's facing out with the nice view. Yeah, I have the nice view. Oh, I, I have the so nice good. view across a, a magazine. So I can I can complain. I feel very spoiled. I I oh, I miss going there though. It's like I it's I, yeah I miss routine. Oh, I mean like I'm sure that you'll be back again in two months and you'll love it even more than that. Yeah, ever. well at least they said that like even if it's summer vacation, as long like as soon as they said that we can like people can be a bit more together, they're gonna try to at least offer class uh, mm. so we can move in a big stay like a phase and it was just it, you make it easier and more enjoyable so maybe in a sense like this is you know i mean i think we've all been trying to find silver linings to this uh you know lockdown situation you know for you yeah. you've got yoga and knitting and like you said discovering sort of your love of dance so maybe in a sense do you find that maybe mentally you'll be more refreshed when you get into the studio um i think so because i think i never I never had that much time to concentrate on myself. I think mm. everybody is sort of in the like has been put into a corner to think about everything they do. Yeah. So I, in a way, I'm 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 interested to to see how I'm going to react and how my my friends are going to be as well. Because I feel like people people are change people are going to change, mm. uh, and I'm excited to see what the difference will be. Like, do you see yourself uh, becoming a different person? I think so. Like, yes and no. I, you know, I think yes and no. I think I won't know until like further out when I, when like maybe like after a couple months and you kind of look back and you can see what the changes are. Okay. But it's definitely, uh, I think I have a lot of anxiety. And for me, and I think for a lot of people, just not having the usual routines with like my ballet yeah. and gymnastics and like my work. And, you know, like I said, I was talking to you about having to adjust to, the fact that, you know, things are lower now for businesses is, you know, yeah. um, something that, you know, for me is like a big source of anxiety. And it's sort of, mm. in a sense of learning that I can sort of make new routines for myself and I'm not falling mm. apart, even though there are some days where I like, I cry four times and then some days I'm like, okay, I can yeah. do this, you know? It's... Yeah, like, and it's like, it's a lot of it. The power is not in, in our hands. No, yeah. Like, so I think... Uh, I guess like not being able to to choose it's it's a blessing and a curse because you can use that as a tool to just be like okay there's nothing I can do but there is also that part of me that goes like but I want to like I I want to go out and I want to do something and I like I want to be back on stage or uh, or I want to go and visit my family back home but I can't so it's just like it's like dealing with that that is like I guess it's been my main goal throughout this whole time is just like try to stay sane. Yeah, and that's the main thing. Like sanity has never been more important. <laughs> I think dancers, <laughs> we are people who really, uh, well, I'm not like a professional dancer, but like people in this industry, like we are people who really like to have control. And it's something like when you're not, when you don't have that control and you realize that, oh, yeah. I'm, I can still survive, you know? Yeah. Like when you have all these things taken away from you that you thought you couldn't live without. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I'm, I'm but still even, like, able I mean, to like, go I on. See, yeah, I see myself because I, I feel like I've, I've created such a, a routine to my day mm. that it's just like, I don't know, I have to warm up for that, that certain amount of time and then I have to do class and then after class, I have to do that and then I have rehearsed and then once I'm finished with more rehearsals, I have to do, I have to go on the cross trainer, I have to like do yeah. my Pilates yeah. and I love that. And like having a break from from that, or even like doing class in a different scenario that is now my living room, mm. it, it made me realize that sometimes we tend to overreact, mm. and we like I guess we create a, a routine that is not necessarily um, 
necessary. <laughs> like, do um, you feel like you were maybe overdoing it or something when you were when you previously did it? Is that? I definitely overthink. I, I like. I feel like I I tend to overthink and I tend to like get very like superstitious about stuff um, that I feel like maybe going back I would just like sort of a few uh, that I can sort of ease the side of me so like, a little bit more. So did you, was it very easy for you to like tell yourself to give your body a bit more of that break? Like you said, you were trying really hard at the beginning to like keep up with the fitness. Right? Then, no, it was definitely not. No, it was not, especially because I mean, with social media, you see uh, people yeah. doing double tours in their, on their living what, room. What and is, people and what is, turns on carpet. And there was a part of me that, I, I mean, I would love to be doing that in my living room, but I just can't. Yeah. Um, so I, I also went through that phase that I, I almost had to like take a break from Instagram because I feel like, um, I was like trying to compare myself to everyone else so much, um, that it was making me very frustrated because I was like, I mean, I cannot do six pirouettes in my living room and how come everybody else can? I can't. Like, I don't know. I can't. Or I don't, (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure you can. Uh, or I like I don't feel good like I, I I don't like I feel stuck and I don't feel great dancing mm. but then you you see yourself out like you see other people out there and they're like looking great yeah so I I went through a phase that I had to just like give that a break and then like really like drill into my head that it's just like um that like, I guess social media is all about showing your your best side, yeah, and you know? I think that's what I've been hearing from a lot of people is that you know seeing everybody just doing stuff on social media is it's just it's too much because like yeah and then it's, so it's good to take a break that, yeah yeah so i i use the internet as like I, I, what is awesome and i feel like a lot of companies have been putting performances yeah on and i feel like i put my bun head cap on and i sit down and i watch like an entire ballet and it, it, it's been very inspiring and it, it's been really nice to watch things that I wouldn't necessarily be able to watch in my normal life. Right. Like for example, Sunfront, they put, they are posting a lot of stuff in like New York City ballet. Yeah. And there are two companies that, I mean, I don't usually travel to New York or San Francisco. So it's been really nice to see all the amazing work that they put out there. Because yeah. I mean, they're, God, they're good dancers as well. Oh, they're yeah. incredible. I saw and it, it's been very, very inspiring to see what is out there in a way. Yeah, and it's uh, interesting to see what different companies are doing because, like, I saw a bit of um, San Francisco's R and D with uh, Masha Koshikova, and it's like you don't normally yes. get to see that. So I was like, no, it's just yeah. like, so it's been really nice. Or even like, watch uh, ENB has been posting some stuff. Yeah, uh, so, our friends so ENB. It's been, it was, so it's been good to like go back and sort of like leave a bit of my like refresh some of my memories on on staff or like even see stuff like they post a couple of weeks ago they posted Roman Juliet and it was nice to watch the whole thing because I I was only I was always part of it and there were scenes that I never watched from the front and it was it was just really nice and very inspiring to to watch and I mean Alina is like beautiful and it was it was really touching to to watch as a, an audience member See when think, when I'm when I'm watching that I'm just looking for you. I can't. I'm just looking at you guys. I'm so sorry to like but, the amazing but principal dancers, makes, but like I just like but, looking out for people I know. But that's what is that, it makes it so interesting as well when you there's someone that you know that is in the recording because it suddenly becomes more personal. You no, know? yeah. Like, I mean, I I love doing that too. I always like. I mean, I guess I, I, there's a few people that I know. I don't really know anyone in New York City Ballet, but uh, there's a few people I know in San Francisco. And yeah. every time I see a familiar face, you get you see that your eyes they get drawn into that person almost straight away, which is it's really nice. Do you like sometimes if there's people I know who are dancing, especially if they're doing a solo, I get really anxious for them. Like I I yeah. can't watch when I watch them when I even no, just I thinking like, about. No, like, I feel like not so much, not so much when I watch in um, in a recording because I know that I can change. No, yeah, but not I, in a recording. I, yeah. some, but but sometimes when I watch it, uh, a a live performance, I get a bit of that. But then I try to like like see it as an audience member and not as a ballet dancer 
watching that performance. Like, if the person falls, if I didn't know ballet, I mean, it's it's part of life. It happens, mm. and sometimes it's not a matter of good technique or bad technique. It's just like, I mean, things happen, and it's live theater, and that's the beauty of it. And I try to like ease my way into watching, but I I tend to like. I remember uh, two years ago, a couple of years ago, I went to watch uh, Royal Swan Lake. Mm. And I was like, I was sitting in the stalls, and like after the the second act finished, the guy sitting next to me, he was like, "You were the worst audience member ever. You didn't stop moving once." <laughs> and, and, but I guess it's just like it's the nature of a ballet dancer. It's just like yes. you sort of you follow the movements, and it's just like the guy was like, he was like, I, I was like, I couldn't even watch because you kept moving, and I was just like, I am so sorry. I'm also a dancer, so I was like sympathizing to the people on stage. <laughs> I feel like I become a stage mom. I become a stage mom when I watch. Oh, like it's almost like I'm watching sports. You know, it's like I feel like I'm almost watching a gymnastics meet. Like, um, was it last year? Um, you know, our mutual friend at Singapore that says, "Min Yi," she made her um, Odette Odile debut. And oh I yeah, was, yeah, we went to school together. Yeah, yeah, and mm. I was like sitting there like a stage mom watching her when she was like doing her like fortes or when she was like doing her um, white swan. No, but I feel like I was just like, come on. Get it. I mean, it's, it's, it's that's how I feel. But it's like, uh, for me, the worst is when I watch Guilherme dancing. Um, I, I remember um, once when he was here on his exchange, he did Chai Pa. And I, so I, it was our birthday. So I flew from London to, to come and watch the show. Oh, I saw that. And I remember yeah. feeling so anxious in the audience, like so anxious. Um, and then, like, I, I'm the first one to scream bravo when he ends. And, like, I'm the, the, the crazy person in the audience. But it's, it's sort of nice. But it's, it's, hard, I like, it's, it's harder to watch because you sort of, there's nothing you can really do. No, it's like once you're dancing, you're, like, you sort of, you're in control and I guess you deal with it. But when you're watching someone you know, you, you sort of, you really want them to succeed, no? Yeah, yeah. And you... And you really pressure yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, like, it's like the thing, you're not in control anymore. You're just watching them. You just really want them to do a good job. Yeah, I can see the gray hairs coming out. It's like, you're like, come on, come on. Yeah, come on. You just nail this combination. <laughs> well, you just land that pirouette. You don't, you don't get off your leg. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> but see, that's why you guys are the dream team. Um, nah. Um, I just have one last thing to ask you, actually, which is that, like, yes. how did you adapt to the Burnonville system when you were, when you moved to um, Royal Danish? Or was that something that was, like, not that difficult for you? Because I've seen, like, some of the videos and I'm like, that footwork is crazy. Yeah. Well, some of it is really, really intense. I feel like I've always been a fan of uh, the, the Burnonville style. I think they have a very effortless way of moving. And I guess it's something that I, I haven't mastered yet. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I will ever master, but it's, um, but it's, it's intense. Like we, so uh, this season, we did a, like a new Bruneville ballet that it was, um, so they got all the steps from the Bruneville classes yes. and they put it all together into a men's ballet. Oh. And it was the hardest ballet I've ever done. Oh, I want to see that. That, like, it, it, into a point that, like, I would, like, leave the stage at times. I, I couldn't stop burping because I was, like, so tired and, like, I could not feel my legs. It was, it was, it was very, very intense. So I feel like the hard thing is because when you watch, it looks very simple in a way. But it's not. But when you do it, it's super tough. I mean, just um, watching alone, I don't find it simple. I mean, like, it looks very effortless and, like, f quick and floaty, but I'm like, I, I know my feet can't move that fast. <laughs> like, I know I can't jump that high. <laughs> but my feet can't move when, that I fast. Walk, when I watch, I'm like, okay, that's simple, because I guess it, it's such a, um, the coordination sort of, it makes a lot of sense with the movement you are doing, like, right. where your body goes and all of that. But then once you do it, it takes you a long time to, like, make it look that easy right because i feel like i mean i wasn't born of you trained so i feel like my body sort of wants to go the other way most of the time yeah so like it takes a lot of effort to like sort of shift your body to where it should go but i guess once you get it it feels quite nice like 
I mean, it feels tiring, but it feels quite flowy. Mm. Um, so it, it, it's very interesting. And it's interesting to be in a place that has so much history as well. So I feel like they take it very seriously. Um, and it's, it's very interesting to learn from uh, where it was all created. I feel very inspired. And are you, um, you know, I mean, the new season is uh, a little bit away, but um, are you dancing in anything exciting that people should, obviously people should come watch you anyway, but you know. Is yeah. Anything no, we have to? we have some good things coming up. Um, so I think we we have a Twilight Harp Come Fly that opens the season, which is super jazzy. Um, that uh, I'm excited. And um, then there's more classics. We do Cinderella. We do Buy a Bear. Um, Nutcracker. Uh, wait, I need to. I need to go through the list because I don't actually, we, we have quite a lot of uh, production. <laughs> we have, we have Etude just coming back. Um, what is my list? Uh, we have, uh, oh, we, we are doing uh, Hofetch as well. Wow, that's really exciting. Oh, it's, a very diverse, it's a very diverse season. Yes, and Yorma Yello is also creating something. We have Napoli, we have a brand new um, La Feed production, which I guess is like older steps with uh, new sets and costumes. That's so, um, I'm jealous now. So we, we have, hopefully we'll be back to it once the season starts. And, will it but be uh, with, uh, it's very exciting. Will it be with a full, full theater or is it going to be like less people? So I'm, I'm not sure because the last performance we did before we closed, we only had half of the album. Right. So maybe they're going to do with like less. I mean, the theater here is not huge. I yeah. think it's like around like 1,500 people. Right. 1, so it's like, but I mean, still, I feel like most of our audiences they're older yeah so they are technically be in the risk group so i mean i'm sure they're gonna they're gonna be very sensible about it and I'm, i i've heard that like even the the tickets they're selling the tickets yep. but if you feel like you are unsafe and you don't want to go uh you get this like free return policy that sounds um, that sounds sensible so i think i mean they're gonna they're gonna try to do it the right, I think. Yeah, I'm sure they do the right thing. I'm sure they'll be responsible about it. But um, yes, um, you know, I think maybe now there might be a couple more young people thinking about going to the ballet now after watching you and that lovely concert that you put on mm -hmm. outside for oh. And I only wish I, mean, that I, I could have been there, but it was so nice to see nah. the videos. I think you, you, what you did was a really, really special thing for people. Oh, thank you. I mean, I, I'm glad you enjoyed. Yeah, I did. I, I, I mean, I thought that was really lovely. It really was. Um, and you know what? I think maybe we should just on our social media, when we see everybody being productive, maybe we should just post videos of ourselves being lazy on social media. Yeah, I, yeah, you counterbalance, counterbalance. No, like it's, it's good to be lazy as well. I think that you have to listen to yourself. Yeah, maybe um, instead of turnout Tuesday, we should make turn in Tuesday as a thing where we just post ourselves like in bed. When yeah. everybody, maybe that should be uh, our Instagram my live. Netflix marathon. Yeah, yeah I that's... Would, I would, I will live myself watching Netflix. Yeah, I will live myself lying on my bed with petting my dog with like Roberto and Freeman. There. Making popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> making cake. Oh, just not even making, just eating cake. Yeah. Just eating cake. Eating cake. Yeah. It's definitely one of my favorite things to do is eating cake. I same, think. same. I think that's what we should do. Like when everybody has their Insta lives and they'll turn into ours and it'll just be like you it's sitting like, there in front of the like TV. like working so hard. Yeah. I mean, it's hard work. Yeah, I mean, Netflix requires a lot of concentration. It's, it's, yes, it's, it's, it's a lot of different shows as well you can choose. Like, it's really hard. Like, like, choosing the right show is not a simple thing. No, it really isn't. Something that fits you and fits your mood. It's like, it's, and that, it's that you can work. sit down and watch for two hours. It's not, not easy. Yes, it's like, I mean... <laughs> People don't appreciate that. Like, that's more work than are you watching at the class. moment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you watching at the moment? And I'm kind of looking for a new show to watch. So if you have any recommendations, mm. please let me know. Have you watched Killing Eve? No, I haven't. What's that about? Uh, it's, um, it's, she's like a professional killer. Um, 
and it's just like the whole like they they sort of look to see who that like so they see that there's like a professional killer out there and they try to see who it is but it's really good it's like the the guy the rod is actually a damn critic in the uk oh um oh yeah and it's wow. uh it's with sandra oh from Great i Anatomy. love her i love her she is so fabulous she's so fabulous. really really good yeah sandra Collis. so I, I, so it's uh this is a good one what else has i been watching i mean i i'm a big drag race fan Oh, RuPaul. See, I can watch the whole thing. Yeah. I can watch like random episodes, but like the whole thing, yeah. here, it's too, it's like, I need to take breaks. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, I it's guess, too much fabulous uh, for me. I, I understand. But I, I, so I'm a big fan, so I watch some of that. Um, I mean, I, I do love a good, like, Love is Blind every once in a while. It's my guilty pleasure. Have you watched Love is Blind? No. Oh, okay. After we go <gasps> off, we're gonna have to talk oh to you. Oh my god! Yeah, no, you yes. Haven't watched okay. Love is Blind? Yes, I have. I have. Where have I have. you been? Oh, you have. I, okay. I did. I did. I got okay. mistaken. I thought it was the other thing. Oh, after we finish the interview, we're gonna have like a talk about Love is Blind. Oh yeah, because I. <laughs> after this is that we're gonna have a like, whole Love is Blind. We're gonna spill that tea. Because <laughs> that's some good stuff. It's like. Yeah. It's so bad, but so good so at the bad, same so time. Good. But that's, uh, it's see, like, see, that's what that's the kind of mental break we need. Watching yes. Actually, happens. have you watched Unorthodox? No, I haven't. It's really good. It's really it good. won't take much of your time. It's only four episodes. But it's, I, I watched it all in one go on a Sunday. Oh. And I cried a lot in the end. Um, it's, it's very good. You know, that, that one's going on my wishes, Killing Eve yes. and Unorthodox. Um, well, Vita, thank you so much for taking the time to talk thank to me. Thank you so much. It was so nice to catch up with you. And like, I know. And I can't wait to like go to Copenhagen and hang out with you again. Oh, God. I, yes, we can't wait. To be, hopefully, I will show, show up in Singapore at some point soon. Yes, please.